Hello again. Uh, we're back again, and I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and this is <coughs> Dr. Amit Shah. Hello, Anil. And again, we are looking at a controversial subject to discuss, uh, looking at it from the evidence-based medicine and trying to get a few, an idea of how things are going. Uh, Amit, uh, I want to ask you about the platelet-rich plasma, PRP as commonly known, uh, which is, has a huge following and use across the world. Uh, where do we stand and what is this? So basically, Anil, let me, let me give you a bit of an uh, idea about what platelet-rich plasma is. Platelet-rich plasma treatment um, has been used uh, uh, in the last decade uh, quite increasingly and alarmingly for various uh, areas such as musculoskeletal injuries, um, hair regrowths, and obviously uh, reproductive medicine is now becoming uh, more and more involved uh, in the platelet-rich plasma therapies. Now, I completely understand the frustration that we have as clinicians in the group of patients who have got very poor endometrial development or have got uh, poor endometrial follicular growth or less number of follicles. And that frustration often leads to uh, positively sometimes and sometimes negatively uh, new therapies coming into clinical practice. Um, I was quite intrigued as well to know a bit more about platelet-rich plasma because that is not something what uh, you and I uh, practice in the United Kingdom and most of the developed world. Um, so Journal of um, Assisted Reproduction and Genetics in 2018 has uh, published a very uh, fantastic review of uh, where we stand with these treatments. Um, the scientific data is just not there. The numbers are just not there. The initial Chinese study published had shown uh, five patients involved in that research studies. There's been not a single research study which has showed more than 10, 12 patients being involved. And clearly coming to a conclusion based on such small numbers, which often tend to show uh, huge biases and biases get quite multiplied, it literally seems that everybody who has this treatment is uh, getting pregnant. Now, if you look at it with a fine tooth comb and analyze it critically as one should do uh, the evidence in front of you, you soon tend to realize that there just isn't a mechanism of action um, um, or a plausible mechanism of action yet described. No one knows what it does. No one knows how it works. And the scientific data is just not there. And yet again, Reproductive medicine especially, because of the frustrations that I mentioned before, have jumped in and put this into clinical practice without having robust clinical trials. And I certainly feel very strongly about it. And I really feel that this may actually put our patients at disadvantage in future. We have not evaluated this therapy and clinicians have just jumped onto this new bandwagon. So that's, that's where I think we are with these therapies. And um, there, there are possible anti-inflammatory effects, antibacterial effects of uh, plasma-rich, uh, uh, platelet-rich plasma, etc. But uh, there are no robust studies, and that's the problem. Uh, you know, looking at many things, you know, uh, uh, when we look at how reproductive medicine, I, I agree, I understand the frustration, and when almost we come into the the final frontier of science where our treatments still don't work and I can understand the frustrations that come up and we look into the horizon at areas like the, yeah. at PRP, at GCSF, at doing more bone marrow transplants and infusions. And the, 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 here one of the things that continues to worry me is how is it that you take somebody's own blood and take the you know, platelet-rich plasma and then put it and how is it that the same treatment can be used for hair, for bone, for teeth. Th teeth. Yes. Uh, and uh, then for uterus. Yes. And then uh, 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 I, uh, they, they are, I've seen advertisements where people have used it for far more sinister and completely bizarre reasons. I completely and agree. where are we getting uh, to, to this treatment in the next couple of years? Do you think it will have the depth which we have seen of all these, some of the crazy treatments? Well, just, just like. You know, you, if you had a chance to look at the uh, publication from the Oxford University about uh, uh, various adjuvants that we use in fertility treatments and assisted conception, and they had very beautifully analyzed 28 different adjuvants and showed that even something as scientific as pre-implantation genetic screening still doesn't weigh up. Uh, endometrial scratch has come and gone. 
endometrial scratch is no longer recommended. And, 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 in, and, and, and in situations like this, in a clinical environment that we live in, in a medical legally uh, difficult environment that we practice in, I think applying something like a PRP for endometrial development, injecting it into endometrium, injecting it into uh, follicles and ovaries, I, amounts to giving patients false hope. And there are clinics making a lot of financial gain. And I can't help but think that this, to me, is a hugely unethical practice. And I, I very strongly stand against it. And my views are that until someone shows to me that there is a robust science behind it, there is a logic behind why we use it, and actually publish truthful, randomized controlled trials and data, I'm not prepared to accept this treatment. It, and I'm seriously and genuinely worried that it will harm patients. That's where I stand. Thank you very much. So that's again uh, another tip for the week. Thank you. And I, I, and I really hope that clinicians who are using these therapies uh, remain very uh, conscientious and careful and be honest to their patients and my advice would be strongly not to use these treatments uh, in, 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 in desperate group of our patients. Thank you very much.